Hey everybody, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how you can make sure that these software problems don't stop you from setting up your worship keys rig. Ryan, have you ever ran into a software problem? Definitely. Yeah, I ran into my fair share of software problems. Let's talk about this a little bit because it's something that stops a lot of keys players and worship leaders in their tracks. Yep. So one thing that you can run into right off the bat is that when you're using a software keys rig, there aren't any hard limitations built in. Mm. What I mean by this is that, so if you have a just a regular keyboard with all in the box sounds. Might be red, could be black, but it's probably red. <laughs> when you have a keyboard that with those all in the box sounds, it was built where you have, you can choose piano, uh, pad, what, what have you. It's built so that it will work with those sounds. And let's, let's acknowledge here, like that's a computer in disguise. Exactly. Right? It, there's, it's not like magic elves in that red keyboard making it sound that way. There's a computer in there. Yeah. It's just been programmed to do exactly what the red keyboard elves need to do. Yep, and nothing more. And that's where you can run into issues where when you start using a software rig on a, on a, a laptop or a computer, you can push it to do more than it's capable of. Yeah, and that, that is what we run into here at Sunday Sounds, is people not understanding the difference between a hardware keyboard, which has limitations built in, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so the red keyboard that shall not be named has a limitation to how many sounds you can have active at once. And that's not arbitrary, it's because that's what the hardware can do. The little computer inside can handle that many sounds at once. But in the computer world, yeah, there isn't a limitation necessarily on what it will allow you to do. So you could be like us and your first patches, you throw in 30 plus layers. It's gonna be great. And it's gonna really push your computer hard. And, and most likely it's gonna be harder than what your computer can handle. So when I was a new worship leader, I just thought the software I was using wasn't good because it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. When in reality, I was just asking it to do an unrealistic number of things. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a real problem that you have to get out in front of if you're interested in the software keys world. It's like you're gonna run into some limits and they're not gonna be like spelled out for you like they would be with a hardware keyboard that can layer four sounds or eight sounds. Like it's gonna be able to do that. Mm -hmm. In the software world, you just have to be willing to put in a little more time to explore yep. what those limitations are. Now, Ryan, what are some ways that people can easily identify or make the process of discovery a little less painful? Because as a worship leader, I got really frustrated. Well, how can people skip the frustration? Well, one thing we do offer is just different uh, free resources on training so you can see exactly how you can optimize your computer. We'll link that video below in the description. Mm. But yeah, so definitely check out that training, but also just spend time with your, uh, with your software setup. Uh, not time live playing, but time in the practice room. Before you're on stage, exactly. not Easter Sunday. Please not Easter Sunday for yeah. any new stuff, like week after Easter. That's a great Sunday to yes, do it. Yes. Yeah, anything new that you introduce to your rig, or if you're just starting out with the software keys rig, make sure that you do allot yourself a good amount of time to play with that software so that you can become confident that it will work for you. Mm -hmm. You can know that, hey, I'm playing with this exact setup and it works for me 100% uh, of the time in the practice room. Yeah. So then you're fully confident to take it live. So, okay, let's talk about the second problem, which we sort of are gonna be in this software versus hardware space again. In the software world, I think people run into problems organizationally. Mm -hmm. How do I take all that I've discovered, all the amazing sounds that I'm finding and downloading and creating and, you know, all this stuff, how do I actually like make this into a workflow? Because in your hardware, there's places for that. There's preset banks where you can save stuff and you can't put it anywhere else. There's no desktop, there's no cloud, there's no Dropbox. I've emailed myself patches before, Ryan. I've done oh, it's, horribly yeah. embarrassing things. How, how, <laughs> have you run into organizational problems? Like, uh, I've, I'm really Oh yeah, I, I, I used to be in the habit of just, well, I didn't really have an organization, uh, a, a structure. Yeah, so, that was no, no process at all. Yeah, it would be save a concert file with all these patches in it. And then if I needed to do that same song again in a few weeks, I'd have to go back and see which, which concert was I using on that Sunday, pull the patch out. And then I would of course not save the patch to somewhere that I could remember to access it. So it just became just a jumbled mess. I'd have patches and concerts and the names were like 
one, 1-2, one 1-3, it was just a mess. So yeah, right. having a, a set structure um, for, for your file organization is key. And this problem is rough, even if you're the only person using the rig, but it becomes an insurmountable problem if you're trying to set this up for your volunteers or if you're one of many volunteers all using the same rig. Because if, if, I mean, you digging through a bunch of documents folders to find a patch is one thing, but if you're the worship leader and you're asking your keys player to do that, like you're not setting them up for success, that's gonna be a problem. And if you're one of the keys volunteers and you're trying to make sure that everybody's on the same wavelength and you don't even have a process for where you should save patches, then that's just gonna cause a lot of unnecessary friction. So figure out what a system works for you. There's different ways to do it. You have the freedom to choose in software, but the, the worst thing you can do is not make a choice. Yep. Like however you decide to structure it, just make sure there is a structure. And it doesn't need to be rigid, like this is the way we're gonna do it forever, but like make one choice, like mm -hmm. build a folder, even if it's on your desktop, just labeled patches and put some patches in there once yeah. in a while, like try and establish one good habit that you can build. So how do you like to structure your stuff now? So I use main stage and I have everything set up so that I can access all of my patch files from within the main stage software itself. So I don't mm -hmm. ever have to even go to my desktop to search for files. I can just, I have it all categorized by type. Yeah. So if I need, if my worship leader says, can I have a warm pad, a bright pad? I have it all sorted out by uh, sound type. Mm -hmm. And then I can pull that up right in main stage and instantly uh, find the sound that I look for. And this is an area I actually feel like we can speak to because mm -hmm. we both had just dumpster fires of organization systems in the past, and we finally figured out a way to make this work specifically for main stage users and for Ableton users uh, with the, the templates that we offer actually have an organization system built in that's pretty intuitive. It sort of labels everything for you, so it doesn't take you more time to be organized. It actually saves you time, yep. even at the very beginning to just put stuff like where it goes, the containers are already built yeah. in. And, and that system that we put in place in, in our template is designed because we had this problem. So we wanted to make sure, hey, how can we address this issue right. and make it so that everybody can just have a really clear and easy to way find mm -hmm. uh, location to go for all of your sounds. Right. Okay, so let's hit this third problem. This is maybe the biggest problem that, this is gonna apply to you whether you're using hardware, software, main stage, Ableton, the red keyboard that we won't name. But if you guys wanna sponsor us, let us know. Um, <laughs> what's the third problem that people run into that can stop you from having a successful keys rig? So you can have sounds that are maybe too over the top uh, for, for your context. Yeah, so have you ever used a cheesy sound? Yeah, so it's, it's, <laughs> it, it, hang on, hang on, no, okay, let's get specific, because there's yeah. a story there, Ryan, so what's the sound, what's the cheese? Well, we have a, it, well, it really all depends on your context too. So in mine, my, my church is a bit of a smaller uh, setting, mm. and so some of those like big synth leads might not go over as well, and it just depends uh, okay. on, yeah kind of the congregation, the age, the style of the music. Right. If, if your congregation's used to may, maybe more of just a, a piano, maybe pad, just the kind of instruments that you find in like the real world. And then all of a sudden you hit them one morning with like this big bright synth lead. Mm. It can be kind of jarring. Right, so taking things like one level up instead of 11 levels. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, that I did that was way over the top that I'm really embarrassed about, uh, when I first discovered main stage, I was most excited about like arps and time sync sounds like side chained pads and all of these really tempo specific things. And I thought this is really gonna level up the sound of, of my church worship band. But the problem people, dear viewer, was that my worship band did not play to a click. So I was in a dreamland of thinking that that would be a good idea, but I would, <laughs> I would just over and over bring these really cool sounds. Mm -hmm. At least I thought they were cool. Maybe they weren't, but I thought they were and they would be locked to a tempo, and then I'd get really frustrated when the band would drift. But like really, I was not contributing something helpful. I was trying to make the band do something it wasn't set up to do. And especially when I was just like playing keys in a band, not even the worship leader, where I had, I had no authority to say like, hey, we have to follow this thing. Yeah. I had a big head and big ideas, and I wasn't appreciating or respecting the context at all. So the type of sounds you're using, whether they are unfamiliar, like jarringly unfamiliar to your band, 
or to your congregation, like in your case, yep. or in my case where like, they just didn't fit with the way my band was structured. Like I was trying to add in an element that none of the rest of the band was equipped to play along with. But that can cause a lot of friction, can cause a lot of frustration. So like really think about what your band is currently doing. And I mean, especially if you're the worship leader, like how speak to how worship leaders can navigate maybe a situation where the keys player doesn't have a finger on the pulse of yeah. what over the top is. So having a, a good relationship um, goes both for keys to worship leader, worship leader to keys player. You want to be able to sit down and talk about, hey, this is what I want to be able to do with the sound and this is kind of where we're at. Yeah. So being able, if you're the worship leader, take your keys player out to, to lunch or something and say, hey, um, maybe let's, let's work on a way to transition um, just everybody and ease into these new sounds. Mm -hmm. Maybe dial some of them back just a bit. Um, as a keys player, it let your worship leader know what you're bringing because if sometimes you, you might show up with a software rig, all your sounds are different, uh, they might not be prepared and, and the song might not be structured to handle that. So make sure that you are both on the same page about how you're going to approach these new sounds. So to wrap this up, these three problems, or just not name what they are again. In the software world, there aren't hard limitations. So you have to figure those out kind of in real time sometimes. Like mm -hmm. that can be really scary or frustrating. Uh, the second problem is organizational structure or total lack of organizational structure. And then the third is sounds that are maybe over the top, not maybe necessarily in general, but just for the context of where yeah. your band is. So these problems don't have to stop you guys. If you're working on setting up a keys rig, you can address them with your worship leader. You can address them with your keys volunteers. And we're here to help you as well. If you're navigating this big shift in worship music in keys playing in general, we are here to help as well. So we're going to include links in the description of this video to some helpful resources that can help you understand how you can implement main stage at a high level, how you can implement Ableton at a high level, and regardless of what software or red keyboard you're using, how you can just approach keys playing in general with more clarity. So we're glad that you guys watched this video. Ryan, thanks for sharing your thoughts and ideas. Leave a comment, let us know if it was helpful and let us know what you'd like to see us discuss in the next video. Lastly, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future Worship Keys content. Ryan, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for having me. We'll talk to you soon.